Welcome to Divine Consultant, a place where we connect people, innovation and technology to create a successful result for our clients. My name is Lucky Igwe. Today, we'll be looking at the implement step of the NIST Risk Management Framework. The objective of the implement step is to understand how to implement security control as described in a system security plan. The purpose is to implement the controls in the security and privacy plans for the system and for the organization and to document in the baseline configuration the specific details of control implementation. The NIST publication used for the implement step of the NIST risk management framework is the NIST 870. It is the security configuration checklist program for IT products. It is the guidance for checklist users and developers. It provides guidance for the implementation and configuration of certain technical security controls to assist the progress of the development and dissemination of security configuration checklists so that organizations and individual users can better secure their information technology products. While NIST SP870 is useful for implementation of a moderate percentage of technical controls, there are many publications that provide guidance for control implementation in addition to NIST 870. In my previous video on the select step of the NIST risk management framework, I talked about using NIST 853 Ref 4 to select the applicable security control to map to the categorization impact level you know, for the system. So what's going to happen from here is that after all these controls are selected, you know, based on our system, the BMS system, which was categorized as a moderate impact system. Uh, let's say, for instance, we've come to the state of 53 Rev 4 to select the applicable security control to secure the information system. The next step will be the implementation step of the security controls. This table is an extract from an SSP template. This uh, table falls under the minimum control section of the SSP system security plan template. If you remember in my last video, I talked about uh, when I talked about the select step of the NIST risk management framework, that you use the NIST 853 Ref 4 to select the applicable security control to secure your system. Our system, the BMS system was categorized as a moderate impact system and um, AC1, which will be the control I'll be using for the purpose of this video, falls under the moderate control set, you know, that's been selected to secure the information system. Now, the AC1 control was selected and documented in the system security plan as we are seeing it right now. AC1, uh, if you look towards the uh, upper left corner, you see the control number, you see the control name, and you see the control requirement. Now, the control requirements is what the control is required to do. Now, because today's video is focused on the implement step of the NIST risk management framework, we'll be focusing on the lower section. On the lower section, you will see the implementation status toward the, on the left-hand corner. Now, the implementation status shows you the current status of the control that you select or the control that was selected to secure the system. For the sake of this video, we are focusing on AC1. Now, AC1, for the implementation status, you have to determine whether AC1 is implemented, not implemented, planned, not applicable. So you have to determine if any of these options right here, whether AC1 is implemented, if it's implemented, you document it on the right hand side. If it's not implemented, you also document it. Then if you look at the lower section, that talks about the control type. There are various control types. There are common controls, hybrid controls, system specific controls, and inherited controls. Common controls are controls that are applied organization wide that can be used by multiple systems. Hybrid control is a combination of common control and system specific control. They are controls that can be applied to two different systems at the same time. System specific controls are controls that are specifically implemented for an information system. And hybrid or, or inherited controls are controls 
that are inherited from a parent system or a system that is offering controls for inheritance. If you look at the lower section that talks about implementation details, the implementation details or implementation statement is a summary or is a statement showing how the control was implemented. It tells you, you know, provide detailed information on how each of the controls were implemented. So that will be documented in this section. Mind you, if the control is not implemented, you have to also provide a reason why the control is not, not implemented. If the control is planned, you also, also have to provide a reason why the control is planned. If the control is not applicable, you also have to document the reason why the control is not applicable on this section. There are two tasks that falls under the implement step of the NIST risk management framework. The first task is the control implementation. Under this task, the security controls that are selected from the CETN 53 Ref 4 and that are documented in the system security plan are implemented. And the implementation statement are also documented in the system security plan. The next step is to update the control implementation information. Under this task, changes to plan control implementation based on as is implemented state of the controls are documented in the system security plan. To know more about the NIST risk management framework and other services that we offer, visit our website at www.divineconsult.com or you can send us an email at info at divineconsult.com. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you'll be the first to be notified when a new video is released. Thank you.